that doll play, What's My Line? Thank you, and now a gentleman I am always proud to introduce, Martin Gable. And now, a ravishing new addition to the Broadway scene, Miss Pamela Tiffin. And now, Bennett Cerf, who was on a panel with my husband just last week. It was a book panel. panel. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'd be the last one in the world to say that our panel moderator is sometimes long-winded. <laughs> I must tell you that this week, a contestant on a previous show told me that while John was answering one of Arlene's questions, the panelist, the contestant's occupation changed three times. <laughs> and here he is, silent John Daly. All right, let me say, Miss Tiffin, nice to see you with us. Martin, it's wonderful having you back with us, a homecoming, sitting next to your beautiful bride. And as far as Bennett Cerf is concerned, I'll be very spare with language tonight. <laughs> Put your blindfolds on. We're going to start off with a mystery guest. Now, we're going to have to play some games tonight, so get blindfolded. We're going to have uh, two mystery challenges and uh, also some interesting occupations. And when you tell me that uh, the blindfolds are in place... They yes, are. John. They are good. Then yes, it's time to meet our first mystery okay. challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? I think are all well aware, but Miss Tiffin, you've not uh, been as familiar with things as we are. There's a different form of questioning for the mystery challenges. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we will begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. Well, for a special reason, I must ask, are there more than one mystery guest in this yeah. spot? There are? Yeah. Well, in that case, I'm afraid I'll have to disqualify myself for a reason I'll explain later. All righty, Arlene. Uh, have your pictures been in the papers recently? <clears throat> no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. Are you in sports? <clears throat> no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Tiffin. Um, are you in the arts? Yeah. Are uh, you... Wait, uh, 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 that's oh, all you I get. That's all you get. Bennett's well. disqualified himself. Miss Francis? Are you musically inclined? <clears throat> no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Am I right in thinking you're not in the fine arts? Yeah. <laughs> Miss Tiffin? Uh, you're in the arts, and uh, you don't have anything to do with music. That means that uh, you dance? No. Nope. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Are you performers in television? <laughs> five what? down and five to no, go, Mr. Gable. Two lions. <laughs> Are you... Uh, you work in nightclubs. <laughs> I should not think so. Six down and four to go, Miss Tiffin. Uh, do you work in theaters? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Are you in the sports world? No. <laughs> <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Have we established, John, that these uh, ladies or gentlemen, as the case may be, are, are in the arts at all? Yeah, we've agreed that their principal area of activity would be described as being in the arts, yes. They're not collaborating painters or anything. Is that your question? Are they collaborating painters? No, it isn't, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you work more in, in California than you, the, you do in New York? <clears throat> That's nine down and one to go, Miss Tiffin. Do, do you use your voices when you work? No. 
That's ten down and no more to go. I'm afraid we've Aren't stuck them beautiful. Are they composers? Are they composers? No. Well, in a way, I guess you could say they do a little <laughs> bit of composing. Uh, you want to take some more guesses, Arlene? Actually, but composing in a very, very, very no, general sense. No, I thought they sense. might have something to do with the writing world. Well, Arlene, that's, and that's what I had you, in mind. Arlene, find out how well you know them. How well do I know you? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you may all take your masks off. You've been skunked and meet Peter Gable and oh, Jonathan yeah. Sir. <laughs> Bennett, how you feeling, girls and boys? Well, I have been skunked every time Peter has been on. I never know who he is. It's so Peter, humiliating. congratulations. We Thank you did it much. again. Uh, we did it again. <laughs> Bennett, I'm sorry you had to... Uh, Somebody, How do you know Jonathan and Peter were here? Somebody played a dirty trick. Uh, some anonymous person, maybe with the best intentions in the world, but just spoiled the whole game for me, sent me an anonymous letter during the week telling me that uh, John and Peter were going to be on the show. Uh -oh. And uh, I was ashamed because would have, I'm sure I wouldn't have guessed them either, but I had to disqualify myself. I can't believe that any Harvard man would be so dishonorable. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a Yale man. It looked Probably like a Yale was boy's it. writing. But it's Why are too you bad. on, you two boys? Well, because we wanted really what we hoped to do, and I think we'd have done it successfully, was to confound you and Martin and Bennett. And we yes. confounded you two completely, we'd have confounded Bennett if that... By, um, by any the arts, I take it you mean you're in the liberal arts. <laughs> well, they are. Of course. We defined arts loosely. Jonathan is president, and Peter is... Ibis, Ibis, right. which is what equivalent to vice president oh. of the Harvard Lampoon. So certainly they're in the arts. The Harvard Lampoon is well known uh, abroad in the land, and particularly on a campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, they're two wonderful boys. I say that impartially. Two wonderful boys. <laughs> One thing I think actually their mothers and dads probably won't talk about it. They're both juniors at Harvard, majoring in English, and they are. Uh, in the arts, they're literary it as they be can be. better be in the arts, it's certainly not in class. But, <laughs> <laughs> yes, why aren't you studying? <laughs> but both Peter and, and uh, Jonathan are also musically inclined. They've got a rock and, and roll group. What do you call it? The, the, Central, the Central Park Zoo. The Central Park Zoo. And uh, That's what it's anybody who wants to have a zoo at a party, I'm their agent from here on <laughs> Thank in. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much, yeah. Jonathan. And thanks, Pete. I'm Thank sorry that we much. had that letter because I think we'd have confronted your your pop as well as we confronted your pop and mom, but this the breaks of the game. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Well, we'll have another contestant in just for you in just a moment after this word. And now to meet uh, a challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Pamela Kemp. Right, ma'am? All righty. Is it Miss or Mrs. Kemp? Mrs. Mrs. Kemp, where are you from? I'm originally from England, now living in California. From England and living mm -hmm. in California. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kemp. Yeah. Now, would you join me here, please, ma'am? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Kemp is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin things with Martin Gable. Could I avail myself of your service? Yes, you could. Is it something that's more useful for men than it is for women? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Tiffin. As in it's more useful for women? No. No, the question as it was posed, is it more useful for men than it's <laughs> women? You said, is it more useful for so that just gets us both over the table. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Kemp. Uh, judging by your appearance, uh, I would venture a guess that your service has something to do with the entertainment industry, has it? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, would it be motion pictures or television? Uh, one of them. Which one? <laughs> uh, I'll guess motion pictures. 
No. Three down and seven to go. Miss Preston, Dick, you bet it. You are therefore associated in some way with television. Sometimes. Are you ever on camera? Yes. Uh, are you on camera alone? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, am I right in thinking that you're not in a dramatic or uh, comedy series? Yes. Uh, are you in television in the performing end as opposed to, say, the commercial end? Yes. Uh, when you perform, do you illustrate something? Um, no. With your permission, I would say in a very broad term of reference, we would agree. I would also remind you that the question having to do with television uh, was answered in such terms as to suggest that this was not the entire right, area of activity. Quite so. Right. Thank you, John. Uh, when you, in a broad sense, illustrate whatever it is that you might illustrate, does it improve the viewer who observes what you do? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's broader than that, I'm afraid, Martin. Five down and five to go, Miss Tiffin. It doesn't, it doesn't improve the viewer. No. Um, uh, do you use your uh, voice? Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you are uh, on screen. Mm, Sometimes yeah, in TV. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you then, if you use your voice, you speak or you sing? No. Well, we, well, we do agree there is some yes. speaking, yes. Mm -hmm. But this is a, just sometimes, which is all we want to convey. I see. Then, uh, uh, do you dance? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Kent, would your kind of program with which you're usually associated have anything to do with either news or the weather? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm sure Bennett is asking the question in the context of continuous or reasonably frequent performance Would it be in either one of these two connected with either the fields. news bureau or, or no, the uh, that's weather That's what we bureau. thought. Thanks no. very much. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Bennett. Is the work, however, that you do, Miss Kemp, informative? Does it help in any way? No, no I, not I really. would think no. Not, no. not as uh, substantively informative. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Would it be considered, in the broadest sense, a form of teaching? No. <laughs> Nine down and one to go, Miss Tiffin. And if it isn't informative or teaching, then it's entertaining. Yes. Yeah. And, oh, God. <laughs> no. Okay, we have a conference. You may have 30 seconds for a conference. Yes, Maybe a voice is used in connection with something like a Disney cartoon or something. Maybe she wears puppets. No. Yes, it could be. Do you, do you, uh, uh... <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Off they go. You want to take some more guesses? Mrs. Kemp has a most, most interesting occupation. She sells second-hand automobiles. No. <laughs> she has to do with a Gallup poll. No, it's the kind no. of occupation I've always wanted Bennett to have. Oh? <laughs> Mrs. Kemp gets sawed in half. She's a magician's <laughs> assistant. <laughs> I think that gave you a good bit of trouble because you, you got too much into television. Yes. You didn't get into, into I'm uh, certainly stage glad you brought both your halves with you tonight, Mrs. <laughs> Kemp. Well, now, the thing that tickles me, actually, Mrs. Kemp uh, is in an act with her husband, Raymond Kemp, and she is sort in half, but not with the traditional box. You describe it because... Uh, That's right. Uh, all we have is the two sawhorses. We put one sawhorse and then another and a plank of wood. And then I come out in a sheath dress and he puts me on top and saws me in half, parts me, and put me together again. Gosh, I what wish you'd try that on John Daly. <laughs> 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 we could. Yeah. But actually, it, it's, uh, I must get a look at the CBS. She was on CBS, or rather Mr. and Mrs. Kemp were on CBS News, Benny, which is why we had some concern about your question, because it's, I'm used to the idea of putting, you know, the box and sewing the box, and I figure I've got that all figured out. Or will talk but sometime, does Mrs. But this Kemp one. usually perform in a nightclub or a, a, a circus? Where would you where would you do that as a rule? Just everywhere, nightclubs and uh, yes. television. We've done television. That's how that came up. You see. How do you do the trick, Mrs. Kemp? <laughs> I'm sworn to secrecy. Ah, good for you. Leave it that way. And thanks Thank for you. breaking the secrecy enough to come anyway and visit with us. Nice Thank to have you, you in our regards to your husband. Thank you.
We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now, another special feature of our program, the appearance of a second mystery challenger, for which, once again, the panel is, of course, blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Back yes, on. John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? Once again, panel, back to one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin things with uh, Pamela Tiffin. Uh, are you in the entertainment world? Uh, yes, there, there has been a time. There, yes, I am in the entertainment uh, world. Uh, Mr. Sir? One, one. Uh, do you uh, do your principal work in the motion pictures? I would say uh, up to this uh, time... Uh, pretty evenly divided. Uh, at the moment, uh, I'd say Bennett uh, doing motion pictures. That would be a yes and no answer, but in the immediate context of the moment, yes. Miss Francis? Are you in a picture that is about to open on Broadway? Uh, no, I am not in a motion picture that is uh, about to open on Broadway. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Cable. Uh, you have also appeared on the stage. Yes, I've appeared on the uh, Broadway stage for several years, as a matter of fact. Miss Tiffin? Uh, uh, did you receive a lot of your training in New York? Uh, in which respect, Miss Tiffin? Well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you go to the uh, Strasbourg School of Acting in New York? <laughs> Didn't everybody? Oh, <laughs> at, uh, at one time, I attended uh, classes with Lee Strasberg. Are you married to a famous actor? Uh, 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 oh. One at a time, Mr. Sir. In the course of your performance, do you ever raise that deep, mellifluent voice of yours in song? There has been a time when I have uh, been known to uh, sing. Miss Francis. Worse than John Davis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you uh, done a picture w with uh, my husband? Uh, not that I would uh, recall no. that I uh, did a picture with Mr. Gable, though I am ready to sign contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Martin. <laughs> uh, was your last appearance on the stage in the last year? No, sir, not in the last year. Three down and seven to go, Miss Tiffin. Have you made films with uh, any of us here? Uh, no, but I have met every one of you. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, are you one of what we would call the younger stars as compared, let's say, with Walter Brennan or... Uh... <laughs> uh, or Bennett Sir? Yes, or I Bennett. think we'd have to say yes to that. Yes, yes. Uh, Miss Francis. Now, you're not in a picture that's about to open. Miss Francis, you're going to die. I know. <laughs> I never thought I would fool you. I keep feeling I know your voice, and I'm, I, I can't make it go with any face. Well, we were born. Uh, it's so... Uh, 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 I want to help them so much. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in the theater with me? Uh... On either side of the football. Uh, no, you have been on the side. I have seen you, and you have seen me. So on either side of the footlights would be yes, but that also answers your main question. Martin? You have a beautiful voice, whoever you are. Well, thank you very much. It uh, comes from years of training. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you hoping ever to work again? <laughs> uh, I have a motion picture that is uh, out at the moment, and uh, I, I'm working now, yes, sir. Miss Tiffin? Uh, do you do westerns? Uh, uh, no. I may after this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. I think that voice is coming I think up. Mr. Sir has got it. I think you're a young man who uh, knows how to succeed, do you? Mr. Surf, you're <laughs> uh, uh, 
That was fun. Bobby, when I first knew you, your voice hadn't changed. It just about... It isn't going to open. It's opening at ratings. It's open. It's opened already. It opened... And it's a big You know, it was funny. Arlene started to say, are you in one that is recently opened, and then you pulled it back. And your phraseology was such that we could give you a no. It opened at Radio City Music Hall, and without painting the lily, you should be very proud. I have not seen unanimity in the critics like this for a long, long time. Oh, you're mad about it. <laughs> That's the greatest news. Congratulations, Bob. But he took, gave you a great clue, Arlene. You know, we all tired New the, England. From New right. England, and I... You didn't detect the accent no. at all? No Boston accent? I got you? a little bit of accent, but I couldn't put your couldn't face on right. it. You've been away so long, Thought I was Bobby. Gene Kelly or something. <laughs> your Bobby. speech has been purified by the Strasburg students. That's right. right. <laughs> but you, you were born in Newton, right? Right, Newton, right. Massachusetts. Arlene's Brookline. Yes, Brookline, right. not too That's far. Right. And I'm going I'm to Boston Tuesday. Are you really? That's oh, right. great. I went up... Uh, well, Arlene knows. I went up, what, three, four weeks ago yeah. to Deaconess Hospital. They had a Deaconess Hospital dinner. We get up once in a while, and it's, it's I a can't wonderful wait to going there. home. I love it up there. The only unsettling thing... Is the thing... picture opening up there, Bobby? Yes, it opens Tuesday night in Boston. And you're going to the opening? I'm going to wear a tux oh, and, I'm gonna wear a tux and be an usher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you better look out how you wear your hair, Bobby. That's you may right. be mistaken for Bobby Kennedy. Well, well <laughs> you never know. <laughs> that would be so bad. Should we tell him? Should we tell him, Arlene? As an old Newton boy, you know, the most unsettling thing ever happened to me, I went to Tilton School, as Bennett is oh. tired of hearing, in <laughs> Tilton, New Hampshire. So I went up and came back down to Boston. This was three or four years ago. And uh, I'm sure that in your younger days, Scully Square. That's right. It doesn't yeah, exist a, anymore. No, I hear There's that. no oh, Scully no. Square. It's that's the most right. terrible thing. You walk into Scully that's Square. That's where we met. A, that's Isn't where we that met. Coming in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was an old burlesque theater there. Oh, wasn't there? That's <laughs> where they met. <laughs> You we bump into him. No, he was on the <laughs> stage. Bill. On the bill. <laughs> That's right. No, but actually, I don't know why we should bore people with these. I mean, when I was in, in, in college in Boston, in Boston College, all of the... Uh, uh, the uh, Did you go to Boston College? Yeah. I lived on Hammond Street. Yeah. Right up the line. Right. Frank right. Lay, he was coaching. Frank Lay, we had great When you were there, teams, so. I think it was Newt Rockman. No, Newt Rockley. <laughs> Newt Rockley is somewhere else. A freshman. Yeah. Well, it's been a great reunion, and I must say again, Bob, I have never seen such unan unanimity in the critics. Congratulations. Oh, I'm very happy. I sure great, you. As it was on the stage. Thank you very much. tonight's panel. Congratulations. We'll all be back after this word. Miss Tiffin, again, it's been nice to have you with us and hope you enjoyed your half hour. And needless to say, Martin, it was great to have you here, particularly because we had a trick to play on you tonight. And hope you come back soon. And good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, my dear John. Good night for now, Martin. Right there. John, Look good out. night. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, John. Good night. I'm truly sorry, Bennett, that we didn't have the fun of, of sticking you as well as we did uh, I thought Arlene. it was rather a my... dirty trick, John. Well, I'm sure it wasn't meant that way, but I hope whoever did it, the young man, has learned a lesson. Because uh, we did a lot of planning for this, and we lost the impact of it by about 50%. And we're very sorry about it. But we forgive him. And we thank all of you for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs>